Hello? Hello, hello? It always feels strange to say hello when the countdown's still going because I'm not sure who's actually watching yet or not. But uh, hello, welcome to this live English lesson. We'll start in about 32 seconds once I test everything and make sure everything is working. It's good to see some familiar faces in the chat. Yeah, I think I think everything's working right. So, we'll get started in about 10 seconds uh on this English lesson about tiny things. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about tiny things. As you know, when you look around you, you can see a lot of things but there are really tiny things that if you want to see them, you have to look really close or you need a microscope like this scientist is using in this picture. So, in the world around us, there are normal size things, there are gigantic things and there are also tiny, tiny things and in this English lesson, I will explain a number of them. I'll do my best. A few of them are rather scientific. So, I did look up the meaning for one or two of them but they are all very common English vocabulary words that you will see and hear as you read the news and as you have English conversations. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about tiny things. Hey, I do wanna say hi to everyone in the chat. Hi to Filippo and Lolly Lolly, Freddie Wolf, Key Park, Paco San, John Wedge, Wanda Prado, Dave the Canadian here to moderate. Mohammed, vocabulary doctor. Hmm, there's a vocabulary doctor here. M. Hiku, uh, automation secure home. Speak English with this guy is here. Hi, good to see you, Brent. Uh, let me scroll back. Blandy, Felipe, how Renata is here. Good to see you, Renata. John Wedge, let me scroll back a bit more. Unsel is here. I know, I think Ruslan is here somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see when I get to the questions but yes, enough of the saying hello and good morning. I know that is a nice part of the lesson. It is nice to say hi to everyone or bonjour in the case of Freddie Wolf and Lolly Lolly. Bonjour et bienvenue. Hello and welcome to this English lesson. I feel like I'm a little hyper this morning. I'm not sure why. We sold flowers at market last night. I didn't sleep great um and I got up early and went for a walk. So, um I'm actually probably what is it? Nervous energy they would call it. Like I have energy because I'm a little bit nervous to do this lesson. I hope it goes well. I think it will. Remember, use the chat wherever that is on your screen for great English conversations about the lesson. Ask each other questions if you want and just enjoy spending some time listening to me speak English but also reading and writing in English a little bit. Uh and then if you do have a question during the lesson, please use the form. There is a link in the description below and uh Dave and Nightbot will share it from time to time as well. But let me do one last audio check. Kind of threw my earbuds over here in a pile. Looks like everything is working great. Let's get this lesson started. John Wedge says, don't forget to give a thumbs up folks. It's always nice. When you do that, then YouTube likes my video more. When you like it, then YouTube likes it more. So, anyways, uh and if you want, you can share the link to this lesson to someone right now and invite them to come and watch. It's totally free and fun for everyone. Let's go. The head of a pin. So, a pin is a small piece of metal and sometimes when someone is fixing a piece of clothing, they will pin it together. When you put a piece of paper, I don't have a piece of paper here. Oh, I do. If I put a piece of paper on a bulletin board, I might put a pin in to hold it. But the top of the pin, the very top of the pin is called the head of a pin. And the head of a pin is sometimes talked about as a tiny thing that's in the world around us. Sometimes people will say things like, oh, I can't can't remember the phrase. Something about on the head of a pin. But anyways, a pin is a small thing The head of a pin is a very tiny thing. It's hard to see unless you look at it really, really close up. And then the eye of a needle. 
So, a needle is similar to a pin but you can put thread through the eye and then you can use the needle to sew things. If my button fell off, if one of my, they're behind the microphone, if one of my buttons fell off, I would need to get a needle and thread and then the tiny part of the needle is the eye. I would have to kind of, I think you do this. You make the thread wet and then you put it through the eye of the needle. So, the eye of a needle is a very tiny thing. I would then use the needle to sew my button back on. I haven't done that for a long time. It's one of the things my mom taught me to do before I went to university. She taught me how to do laundry, how to sew a button back on. She gave me a little needle and thread and it came in handy. I became the person in my dorm who knew how to sew buttons back on. It's a good skill by the way. Grains of sand. So, if you go to the beach here, if I wanted to walk on the sand, I would go to the beach. Maybe you live in a country where there is desert. You would see a lot of sand but if you look very, very closely at sand, it's made up of tiny, tiny grains. So, we call them grains of sand. If you hold a bunch of sand in your hand, there would be millions of grains of sand there. So, grain is also used to talk about things like wheat and barley and oats. We call those grains but when we talk about sand, we also refer to it as grains of sand. Um maybe you're walking along the beach and it's windy. You might get a grain of sand in your eye. That's not a pleasant feeling at all. And then specks of dust. So, specks of dust are things you can see in the air when the sun shines through. Like in my house, there are times where the sun shines in the window and then I can see little specks of dust in the air. They kind of float and eventually, you will have dust on top of things. There's a little bit of dust on top of my computer monitor. When I have lots of dust, I use this. <laughs> this is my my duster. I use this. I'll dust you eyes off. I use this to dust things. Um let me show you and then I go outside and I spin it really fast. Actually, if I do it, I can see some specks of dust in the air. So, anyways, tiny, tiny, tiny things that float in the air. We would call them specks of dust and eventually, they land on things and you do need to dust to clean them up. Bacteria. Now, I don't know a lot about bacteria except that they are very, very tiny organisms. They're alive and they are everywhere. There's bacteria on your skin. There's bacteria outside. If you um uh I'm trying to think. There's bacteria in your dog's mouth. Bacteria are everywhere and this is one of the ones where I needed to um meaning of bacteria and I forget. A member of a large group of unicellular or microorganisms. So, they're microorganisms which have cell walls but lack organelles. Oh, interesting. So, that's your scientific explanation. Bacteria can sometimes cause infections. Uh bacteria um can cause infections or disease. Some of them are bad for you. Some are beneficial. Um so anyways, bacteria, very tiny, tiny, tiny organisms that live in the world around us. And I mentioned unicellular. A more common term would probably be single-celled organisms. So, single-celled organisms are very, very tiny. So, organism is like a word for I was gonna say similar to animal but it's not really an animal. It's anything that's alive that's um that's alive. That's what I'll say and some of them only have one cell. We are multi-celled organisms. We have many, many cells. In fact, we have skin cells and we have all kinds of cells in our body. But there are some tiny, tiny, tiny organisms which are single celled. And then, of course, viruses. Viri? Viruses. Uh oh, I'm the English teacher. Plural of virus. And I have to look up. Let's see here. Hackers like to use viri as a plural, but scholars object and say that it is viruses. Interesting. Anyways, these things are annoying. 
when a virus is going around, it makes people sick. I think we're all familiar with a very common virus that recently went around the world. It's very annoying when a virus spreads. Sometimes at school, one kid is sick because they have a virus and they spread it to some other kids and then pretty soon, everyone in class is sick. Adam, so we're getting away from the living world into what are called the building blocks of the world. Everything around us is made from atoms. They're like the smallest thing that you can have. Well, they have parts like they have protons and neutrons and electrons but an atom is kind of the building block. Everything is made out of atoms in the world around us. This was one of my favorite science classes in school when we learned about molecules and atoms and the periodic table of elements and then we learned things like if you take oxygen and hydrogen and if they are in a molecule like this, it's called H2O which is water. So, this is a water molecule and it is made up of tiny, tiny atoms. I don't think we can see atoms and molecules. I don't know if microscopes are that powerful. Maybe a super powerful microscope but I am teaching English, not science. So, I don't know. Maybe Dave the Canadian or Brent knows if we can see uh atoms and molecules yet. I don't think we can. I think we know they're there but I'm not sure we can actually see them. Now, I have to check. <laughs> I have to look this up. Can we see atoms and molecules? No, you can't see an atom the way we're used to seeing things. Okay. It's too small to deflect visible light waves. So, you can't see it even under the most powerful microscope. Okay. So, again, English lesson here, not science lesson. So, ignore me. Uh, let's see here. You can't see an individual molecule with your eyes or even a microscope. Okay. Way too tiny. Way too tiny. Anyways, let's answer some questions. Uh oh, I hope this isn't too scientific. From Renata. Good morning, Bob. There are radio waves all around us and our eyes are not able to see them. Could you please explain it to us? I hope my question is on topic. Thanks. So, there are a lot of types of waves in the world and there is one particular set of waves that are called visible light and that's what we can see with our eyes and there's also a number of waves that we can hear with our ears. I think from 20 to 20,000 kilohertz. 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. Um I don't know what the wavelength. So, we can see visible light with our eyes and we can hear uh from an audio spectrum of 20 to 20,000 but if the older you get, you can't quite hear the high sounds as well. Um so, I don't know. We can't see or hear radio waves because they are outside of both of those spectrums, I would assume. Brent says, sorry, I have no idea. I just know a particle smaller than an atom has been found. Can't remember the name. Yeah, there's quarks, I think. I'm not sure. Again, Brent and I doing our best to teach English but not scientific experts. Um Let's see here. Next question. Um ooh, I'll put this one on the screen but this is very private. Rabaz, hi dear Mr. Bob. Though my question is off topic, little fix. Have you ever had a love relationship before your love to your wife? I refuse to answer that question. That is a that's a private question. That's something that if you knew me for a very long time and we were really good friends and we're out having coffee, we might talk about that but generally not something people talk about too quickly. Uh let's see here. From Nima. Hello, dear teacher Bob. By the way, you can ask me any question. Here, it's not a big deal. I just choose whether I answer it or not. Nima. Hello, dear teacher Bob. I hope you are doing well. Speaking about tiny things, what is the difference between precision and accuracy in English? Thank you very much, sir. So, yeah, you have to do the job with a lot of precision. The job requires a lot of accuracy. I think they're very, very similar. Um we're gonna go to the internet here. Are precision and accuracy the same thing? Precision and accuracy are two ways that scientists think about error. Accuracy refers to how close a measurement is and precision refers to how close measurements of the same item are to each other. 
Okay, so I didn't 100% understand that, but I hope you guys did. So, when you have a lot of precision, I guess you're comparing things. A lot of accuracy. Hmm. Yeah. This is, we're just gonna move on when Bob can't answer the question. Uh, Filippo. Hi, teacher Bob. Hope you're doing well. My question is, are sugar crystals the smallest kind of crystals? Thank you. I don't know but I do have a slide coming up with sugar crystals and salt crystals. So, we'll have a look. Uh, maybe we can compare with our eyes and make a decision then but I'm not sure if they are the smallest crystal. Should we go to the am I using the internet too much? What is the smallest crystal? Let's see here. No, I guess there's some quartz crystals that are smaller. Okay, gonna have to check the internet if you want more information on that. Mikhail, hi, Bob. Thanks a lot for your work. You're awesome teacher. I have a little question. What is the difference between the words speed and velocity? So, speed is a general term. You know, when you're talking about speed, how fast was he going? Well, he was in a 60 zone. His speed was 65 kilometers an hour. Velocity is more of a scientific term. Um I'm looking it up again. (laughs) Speed and velocity. We don't use the word velocity in regular English in everyday English. It's definitely used in the scientific world. Uh let's see here. Oh, I see. So, speed is the time which an object takes to move along a certain distance whereas velocity is the speed and direction. So, there's another component to it. You need to know what direction it's going. Again, this is not a science lesson. So, um not financial advice. Sorry, that's the little internet joke there. Um from Fabian. Hi, dear teacher Bob. Thank you for this funny English lesson. I have a question for you. Are there ticks and fleas in the Canadian summer? Greetings from Columbia. Yes. So, I will talk about fleas later. Tiny, tiny insects that live on animals. Sometimes try to jump on humans. Um and ticks are um things that Jen and I do have to watch out for especially earlier in the summer. Often, we will have a tick on our leg and we'll have to take the tick off. A tick is another small little insect. Actually, I think it's from the spider family but yes, two tiny little um organisms that definitely uh live here in the summer. Very annoying. Axmed. Hello, teacher. Is there a difference between tiny and small? So, a little fix there. Is there a difference between tiny and small? Thanks. You are a hard worker. I think so. For me, um so, this isn't a perfect example but this is small and this is tiny. So, when talking about things, if I'm using tiny and small, to me, tiny is smaller than small. Hopefully, that makes sense. Like, oh, he has a small car. Oh, he has a tiny car. So, small car, tiny car. Um if I was going to eat an apple, I could eat a large apple, you know, a normal size apple, a small apple or a tiny apple. And then we even say teeny tiny sometimes when something's really little. Oh, that guy has a teeny tiny car. He barely fits in it. Uh let's see here. Last question and we'll get back to the lesson from Peter. Hello, Mr. Bob. Nice to see you today. You too. Your topic is great. It's great. I'm really afraid when I heard tiny things. For example, I'm gonna add a for virus with an S. Sneak, insect, animals. I have, I have, I have a great day. I don't like insects. Uh, I don't like flies. I don't like ticks. I don't like fleas. Those are very, very, very annoying for me. Okay, let me check my audio. Let me check the stream. No one's been complaining so it must be working well. You know, I did get um I did get new a new internet connection a few months ago and knock on wood, things have been really really good lately. Sorry, knock on wood's an English thing we say like when something's going well and you don't want it to start going badly. Uh let's see. Okay, back to the lesson. Particles. So, particles is an interesting word. It can be used to talk about specific things like there's a particle accelerator in Europe where they accelerate different particles. Very, very, very tiny things, okay? We also use it to talk about things like dust. When I said there were specks of dust in the air, I could say there were particles in the air. 
We also use it to talk about things like a firework. When a firework goes off, it a lot of particles come out and then they they they're on fire. Um when I grind metal, a lot of particles fly off. But generally for me, the word particle is not something I use a lot. It's a general term to talk about small things. Usually, I use it to talk about dust like um there's wildfires in northern Ontario. So, there's a lot of smoke particles in the air. Um the last few days have been good but there have been smoke particles in the air. So, that's where you'll hear that word a lot to talk about very very tiny things usually in the air around us. Cells. So, we are um made out of cells. Um pretty much every living thing is made out of some kind of cells. These are red blood cells. These are the blood cells that flow in our blood and do things like deliver oxygen I think. <laughs> you have to have healthy red blood cells in order to be healthy. Um what do red blood cells do? Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs and deliver it through the body. Okay, good. I was I was right. I did research all of these last night but I think I'm too tired to remember. So, cells are very tiny. You can see cells through a microscope. Um I do remember in science class in high school when we first used a microscope, uh we the uh the teacher had special slides made up of something with large enough cells that you could see it with a microscope. Some kind of single celled organism probably. Uh and it was very very fun. But these are red blood cells. They are something that work very hard in your body to keep you healthy and to keep you um oxygenated I guess would be the word. To deliver oxygen through your body. Strands of human hair. So, we often talk about things that are tiny and reference the human hair. So, we might say things like you know this is thinner than a human hair or this is a little bit thicker than a strand of human hair. So, we often refer to hair as a strand of hair. So, these are strands and you might have one strand of human hair and you might say they've invented a new um material and the fibers or the strands are smaller than a human hair. So, we often use the thickness of a human hair to talk about uh, other things as comparison. Pollen. So, right now in our fields, there are lots of flowers. In fact, this week's coming lesson on Tuesday, I talk about one thing. I talk about learning English but I made the lesson in the flower field. So, you'll see lots of flowers. Flowers have pollen and pollen is just really really tiny 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 part of the plant that bees come around and collect and other insects. Um pollen is something that you can get pollen on your hand and sometimes it stains your hand. That can happen with things like um dandelions. There's a little bit of yellow pollen on the top. But pollen is a tiny part of the plant um that uh has a function in reproduction but also something that bees collect. Dust. So, I mentioned that there are specks of dust but there's just dust in general. Uh in the world around us, anywhere you go, there will be dust. Dust comes from people walking on dirt and gravel. Dust comes from just making stuff in your kitchen. Dust comes from the human body. You know, our skin slowly pieces fall off. So, all around us, there is dust and we often I think I dusted here the other day because I can't actually find any dust. Um it will settle and then in order to get rid of dust, you have to dust. So, the act of getting rid of dust is called dusting. It's something you do to get rid of dust. Crumbs. So, this is something I'm very familiar with. When you eat food, sometimes little pieces of the food fall on your plate or on the table or on the counter. When you have a lot of crumbs, sometimes you get ants because they want to eat the crumbs. But crumbs refer to tiny, tiny, tiny pieces of food, usually from drier food like bread or crackers uh, or chips. The small, small pieces at the bottom of a chip bag would be called crumbs. Um maybe when you take a bite of a cookie, a really crunchy cookie, 
Um some crumbs might fall out when you do that and that's pretty crummy when that happens. That's another word we use. So, crummy just means not very nice. Like, I had a crummy day. It doesn't mean there were lots of crumbs in your day. It just means you had a bad day. But yes, crumbs usually from dry food. Um like again, like crackers or dry cookies, those kinds of things, you will have some crumbs. So, sugar crystals and salt crystals. There are two things that we as humans use a lot of uh as we prepare food. We use a lot of sugar which if you look at very, 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 very closely, you will see tiny, tiny little almost like cubes. So, little crystals and if you uh want something sweet, you use sugar. If you want it to be a little more salty, you use salt and the same thing here. If you look at salt really, really closely, you will see little like geometric three-dimensional shapes which we call crystals. So, sugar makes things sweet. I like sugar. Salt makes things salty. Generally, there are two types of people in the world when it comes to snacks. There are people who really like eating things that are sweet and we say they have a sweet tooth and there are people who really like eating salty things and we say they like eating salty things. (laughs) I don't think there is a word for that. So, I like cookies. I like cake. Um I like ice cream. Jen likes chips. She likes pretzels. Uh she likes um tortilla chips. Um so, I'm definitely someone who likes sweets and Jen likes things that are salty which is good. So, we don't eat each other's snacks as often. I will eat salty stuff too though but Droplets. So, this is another one that might be familiar to you because of the recent pandemic. Droplets are very, very tiny drops. So, if you turn your kitchen tap on a little bit, uh, it will drip. A little drop will fall every couple of seconds. It'll go wink, wink, wink. It might drive you crazy. So, that's called a drop. But when we have a really, really, really small drop, we call it a droplet. When you sneeze or even when you cough, small droplets come out. So, again, these are liquid. So, it's either your saliva or something else. It can be water droplets as well. But whenever we have really, really, really small drops, we call them droplets. And the difference between a drop and a droplet, a drop will fall. A droplet is so small, it will kind of float in the air for a little bit. I think it will eventually fall but it's so tiny. Um it's just a little tiny water droplet. It will just float around which is what makes droplets dangerous when there's a disease going around. When there's a a sickness that can spread through droplets. That's why we have to wear masks to stop droplets from coming out and spreading. Lint. If you look in your pocket, you probably have lint. Lint is this really funny stuff that forms when you wear different clothes and fabrics. So, if you look in the pocket, especially in the pocket of a pair of blue jeans, you will most likely find a piece pieces of lint. So, it's this really soft. It's usually blue when you're wearing blue jeans. It's kind of a hint. This kind of shirt doesn't usually make a lot of lint. This is a very tightly woven fabric but definitely, let's see, is there any lint in my short pocket right now? Yep, there's a little piece of lint. I don't think I can make the camera focus on this. We'll try though. Will it focus? Oh, I have to get my head out of the way. There we go. Nah, it won't quite focus. Come on, Mr. Camera. Maybe if I do it this way. I know you're not that interested in seeing the lint that came out of Bob's pocket. Yeah, see there's a tiny piece of lint there on the end of my finger. There we go. I'll just put that over here. I think that lint will eventually become dust if it gets small enough but lint is something that it must happen while you wash clothes as well. It gathers. Pebbles. So, pebbles are just tiny stones or rocks. Um they don't have to be super small but when we go to the beach, we like to go to a beach where there's sand but all of the beaches that are the closest, the beaches that are really close to me, 
actually have stones or rocky beaches and there's a lot of pebbles. So, a pebble then is just a very, very tiny rock. Usually, when I think of a pebble, it's usually round and not jagged. So, jagged would mean it's not nice to walk on. So, usually for me, pebbles are things you find at the beach and they're usually somewhat small and round. Pennies. So, I don't have a penny here. In Canada, we don't use pennies anymore but pennies would be I was just gonna say they're the tiniest <laughs> coin but they're not. The dime is actually tinier. Let's see if there we go. There's a Canadian dime. This is the blue nose which was a famous ship. There we go. Hopefully, I got that right and then we still have on the back of our dimes we have Queen Elizabeth. I think we're going to start to have King Charles on our coins soon. Um but yes, our dime um Canadian dime ship. Our dime is tiny and on the dime it has, let me see here. It features the blue nose which is a famous racing ship I think. I don't know enough about my coin to talk about it but I put pennies up there. But our smallest tiniest coin is actually our dime and we stopped using pennies a few years ago. Um you can still bring them to the bank if you need to but uh other than that um they are just out of service. Everything in our stores is they just round it up and down. So, they round it to the next five cent. The fine print or like I like to say the fine print or ingredients or the instructions on a pill bottle there are some really tiny, tiny words in the world. Fine print refers to when you sign a legal document. Sometimes at the bottom, there's a few things written in really small letters and it's called the fine print and it's always important to read the fine print. And again, the other place you might find really tiny, tiny words would be whenever I have to read a pill bottle, um I have trouble reading the actual instructions which worries me because old people take a lot of pills and old people also can't see very well. So, uh that's why I use reading glasses. Hey, let's do some members only chat. Let me get that set up for a minute here. Let me find the button. While I'm doing that, let me say thank you to all of you who are members uh and to those of you that aren't, don't leave. The lesson, we have about 10 more slides to go. Yep. And uh, I will continue in about five or ten minutes but right now, if you are interested in being a member, there is a join button somewhere. You can click it and it will kind of explain what you get if you become a member. I really appreciate members. They are nice to me. They chat with me in the chat. They are very supportive. So, thank you so much to those of you who are members. If you have a question, you can ask it straight in the chat um and I will continue to answer questions from the form as well. From Nanny. Hi, Bob. I'm getting a lot of fun at your intentions to answer scientific questions. Talking about things. Is it okay to ask what is there in the box? Is okay there? Yeah, you can say what is what is there in the box? Yeah, you can say what's in the box. What is there in the box? Yeah, we would say that, wouldn't we? There are lots of things in the box. What's there in the box? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, I think so. I think it works better with a contraction. It doesn't sound strange to me. What is there sounds weird but what's there in the box? Yeah, you could say that. Um yeah, I (laughs) I am not a science teacher. I did well in science class but I don't remember everything. Okay, from the chat, Fabian says, teacher Bob, we are talking about tiny things but Canada is the second biggest country in the world. Do you know the smaller the smallest one maybe in the world? Not a tricky question. I don't know the smallest country in the world. Is it um the Vatican? Is that a considered a country? Smallest country in the world. Vatican City. Yes, the smallest country in the world is Vatican City with 0.49 square kilometers. I think let me just check something. How many acres is the Vatican? Or Vatican City. Hundred oh, it's bigger than my farm. So there we go. Um, John says, Hello, Bob. No question today. Just listening, learning, and having a good time with all of you. Thanks for coming, John. Wanda, hi, teacher Bob. Why do you wear glasses? Are you farsighted or do you have eye strain? Thanks a lot. 
So, I wear glasses to read the chat sometimes. Um I need them for reading. Uh, I have very good vision in terms of distance. Like, I can see really well till about I think about this far in front of me. Anything closer than that like my microphone here has some writing on it and I can't read it. Still can't read it actually. Maybe it's just too dark um unless I wear reading glasses. So, sometimes when I if I read a book on my phone. So, I have I sometimes read a book on my phone. I will use reading glasses um instead of making the font bigger. Uh let's see here. John Wedge. Does anyone know about Mode Eggs? I haven't seen him around here for a while. He's been in the comments. Uh he has left comments and he um he did join the la- I think last fr- Saturday. I think he was there towards the end. Uh Key says, hi Bob. What's the smallest thing in the universe in your opinion? Don't know. I think atoms and then the s- there's smaller parts of an atom maybe called a quark. I'm gonna have to go to the internet for this one later and find out. Um Jovid says, oh Jovid has joined. Thank you very much. And I do know I wanted to go back and thank. This is way back but new words with MP gifted um one membership to uh Humberto. So, thank you new words with MP is the name of that person. Thank you for donating that. Key Park. Bob, what's the smallest thing in the universe? Yes. What about fingerprints? They are very small too. Yeah, interestingly enough if you touch something, I think it's because of the oil on your skin. You leave fingerprints, right? We sometimes the the common word would just be smudges. Like, when our kids were little, they would touch the front of the fridge and there would be smudges on the front of the fi- fridge but they're actually like all their little fingerprints. But yes, fingerprints are definitely tiny. Uh Key Park, wear glasses to see tiny things. Yes. Fabian, I spent a funny time with this lesson. Thanks a lot, teacher Bob. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I think people are enjoying the times when I don't know the answer to a question. That's always fun for me. When you don't know the answer to a question, you should always get excited because you're gonna learn something. Um let's see here. From not tiny Fred. Pas petit. Hey, Bob. Comment ça va bien? Oui, ça va bien. Je vais bien aujourd'hui. From which size do we have to use tiny? We can say a tiny house even though it isn't so tiny. Merci beaucoup. All best wishes. Yeah, it's interesting. I think we use the word tiny to talk about a tiny house because it's smaller than a normal house. So, in order to use and I think it just sounds cute. Someone probably thought it was a nice name. Um so, a tiny house is usually a very very small house. It's usually on wheels and people can drive it to different places. So, there's actually a tiny house in my yard. If you watch some of my videos, you'll see that there's a tiny house in my yard. So, let's see here. From Orman, hello, Mr. Bob. Do school nurses often check children's heads to see if there are lice? So, that's how we would say that. Do school nurses often check children's heads to see if there are lice? Yes. We have lice here in Canada. As our kids went through elementary school, every once in a while, there would be a an email from the school saying that a child, they found lice on a child and then everyone would check their kids' heads. Luckily, none of our kids have ever had lice but it is common once or twice a year um for the school to say, hey, we found one or two people with lice. You should check and it's usually the teacher. Sometimes, it is a school nurse um although we don't have school nurses the same way we used to. When I was a kid, there was a school nurse. Now, nurses will come to the school every once in a while. Uh from the chat, uh John Wedge, if you stop to think about it, we are like atoms in the gigantic universe. Yes, it is a little strange to think that we're just made up of a bunch of atoms. Lolly lolly, I'm afraid of the little creepy crawlies that wriggle around like maggots, earthworms and so on. Yeah, I don't like maggots. Earthworms don't bother me as much but certainly um maggots come when flies lay eggs then eventually you'll have maggots. If you ever live on a farm, you'll see maggots sometimes. Not very nice and it usually smells wherever they are. I think because the maggots are eating bacteria. So, back to our earlier phrase. Uh let's see here. Unsel says, 
Hello, dear teacher Bob. Doesn't it also fascinate you that every particle in the universe is vibrating or rotating? Yes. That is amazing actually to think that there's little um like electrons orbit, right? And then things vibrate. Like they make atomic clocks by measuring the vibration of very, very tiny things. I'm not sure of the details but yes, things vibrate or rotate. Alex says, hi, Bob. I love watching English long or short videos on YouTube. Little fix. Is it good for me? Cause it's it's like having fun. I think you're trying to say thanks. So, I think so, I was thinking about this on my walk this morning. Everything you do to learn English is good but you should make sure you do a lot of different things. So, just watching YouTube videos in order to learn English isn't enough. You should be watching YouTube videos, watching uh English television, doing some writing, practicing your speaking, uh doing some uh reading. Like I think it's always important to know that like I was in a discussion the other day where someone said um using Duolingo is um not the best way to learn English and I said no but it's another good tool and you wanna have about 10 or 15 different tools that you use. So, right now, I'm redoing Duolingo in French. I'm talking to my French friend in France once a week for 30 minutes in French. Um I'm reading a book in French right now. I'm also trying to watch the news more. It's just important to use a variety of tools. That's what I would say. Uh let's see here. Freddie Wolf. Hey, Bob. An enormous hello. Can the earth be called a tiny planet compared to the immense space? Peut-on tra- traduire tiny par minuscule ou insignifiant? Probably minuscule. I would say yes. Très, très petit. Um I don't know. I would say that like the moons around Jupiter, some of them are tiny compared to our moon, I think. Again, I'm not a science teacher. Um I wouldn't say earth is a tiny planet. It's probably a medium sized planet. That's what I would think. So, let's see here. Lolly says, thanks for your answer. No problem. Brent, above that. When I was younger, the whole class would get checked for lice with toothpicks right in front of everyone. How embarrassing. Yes. Yeah, we would have like there was a special comb or something and then they would use that to see if they could find the eggs or something like that. Um John Wedge, I remember something like that with me too, Brent. Yes. Hey, Brent and Bob, you could do a class now about the biggest things in the earth and the universe. Maybe that's coming up. Maybe I'm gonna do a lesson on gigantic things. Maybe I did one already. I should double check that. Uh let's see here. From Majed. Hi, Bob. What is the best way to teach my daughter how to read English words? Find English children's books. Um especially picture books. So, if I'm not sure how old your daughter is but if she's really young, find what's called a picture book. So, that is a book where on every page, it's like learning. There's like vocabulary with a picture. So, find an English picture book. That would be a great way to do it. Um John says to Freddie Wolf, just think the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall is the largest celestial body in the universe at 10 billion light years in diameter. We are like atoms close. Yeah. It's hard to think about how big the universe is. Uh Filippo, if we think bigger, our planet is very tiny compared to the immensity of the universe. Definitely. Um hey, I'm gonna turn off members only chat and I'm going to finish off this lesson. If you're one of the 323 people watching, first of all, thank you for hanging out and learning a bit of English and if you want, you can click that red subscribe button there and you will get notified when I put a new English lesson out but let's get back to the lesson. Here we go. Pixels. Hey, if you look really, really closely at your phone screen or at a computer screen, it's made up of tiny little pixels. They're little squares or rectangles. Sometimes it's three little rectangles in a square with three different colors. Um but that is what is used to make the image you're seeing. You think you're seeing Bob the Canadian right now but you're actually seeing a whole bunch of really tiny pixels and your brain interprets it as a video or a live lesson of Bob the Canadian. So, pixels are the tiniest, tiniest dot on every screen. 
and when you talk about screen resolution like this I think I'm live streaming at 1080p. So, there's 1080 pixels from top to bottom of this screen. So, let's count them. One, two, three. I'm just kidding. If you have any kind of photo editing software, if you zoom in really, really close with the zoom tool, you will actually see the pixels in something. Dots. So, dots is a general term to refer to anything That's tiny and usually round. This ladybug has dots on its back. Um I'm trying to think of another thing that has dots on it. Oh, if you have dice. I actually got some out just for this. So, this dice has dots on it. So, you see the little round things on it. If I roll this, it will come up with a number. Uh you will count the dots and that's how you know what number you rolled. Filings. So, on the farm sometimes I use a grinder or sometimes I use a file to work on something that is metal and then I will have iron filings or there will be filings all around. Filings are very, very tiny pieces of metal, usually steel. Um if you look here, this magnet is picking up the filings because they are metal. So, they are attracted to the magnet but definitely um yeah, the other day I was working on something where I was using my grinder and then there were a lot of sparks and then there were also a lot of filings. So, I swept them up when I was done. So, usually we use the word filings to talk about small tiny pieces of metal. Sparks are very small. Sometimes when you are having a fire, you will see sparks. There's flames but you'll see sparks as well. Uh and sometimes when you work on metal like this person, you can see that there are sparks flying off of whatever they are working on. So, sparks glow. So, they're very, very hot and very, very tiny. Seeds. This is one of my favorite ones because I'm a flower farmer. Seeds are tiny and when you put them in the ground and when they get some warmth and when they get some water, they will grow. So, when you have things like sunflowers, they will bloom and eventually, you can get the sunflower seeds and you can either eat them. They're yummy or the next year, you can plant them in the ground, water them and if you have some warm sunny days, eventually, the seed will grow into another sunflower. It's very, very cool. It's probably the most amazing thing that I know about. The ability of plants to reproduce. Very cool. Miniatures. So, there is a whole world uh of hobbyists. So, there's not a whole world of hobbyists. There is a hobby where people collect miniatures and they paint miniatures. I've never done this but you can go to stores and you can buy tiny, tiny little characters and then you can paint them yourself and these are called miniatures. So, anytime we take something and make it smaller, we call it a miniature. There used to be a miniature village close to me. It was a place where They had all, there was an Eiffel Tower there by the way. They had all different buildings from around the world but they were very small. Like I was taller than the Eiffel Tower because it was a miniature. So, I'm not saying miniature. Some people do say that. I say miniature. Okay. So, there's miniature village. That's what it was called. It was cool. It's gone now which is sad. I would take my kids there if it was still there. Nanobots. Nanobots would be very tiny, tiny robots. You usually hear about nanobots when you're watching some sort of science fiction show or a science fiction movie or if you're reading a book about science fiction. We have not gotten very far in the creation of nanobots. You can see these uh these little, little tiny robots are smaller than a red blood cell. I don't think we're capable of doing that yet. But a nanobot would be a very, very, very tiny, tiny robot. Uh someday, I think we will probably use nanobots to do a bunch of really, really cool things. Fleas, ants, aphids. I'm not gonna list every single tiny insect but fleas are something that you will find on dogs and cats. Um Oscar and Walter actually take a special pill once a month which stops them from getting fleas and ticks. 
Um, so that's very, very nice. But a flea is a little, little tiny insect that will live on an animal's skin and kind of live off of them. Ants are everywhere. I think they might be one of the most common insects in the world. Sometimes when we leave crumbs on the counter, we get ants in our kitchen. Not very nice. I don't like that. And then we currently have a lot of aphids. Aphids are really, really tiny insects that live on a plant and they will suck the um well, they'll suck the life out of the plant. That's what we'll say about aphids. They drink the plant's juice and it's very, very bad for plants. But eventually, ladybugs come and they somehow, I think the ladybugs kill the aphids. And in our oceans, there is a lot of plankton. Plankton is what whales eat. (laughs) It's kind of funny that one of the, if not the biggest animal, eats some of the smallest animals. But plankton refers to all kinds of tiny, tiny, tiny sea life that um, whales and other animals will eat. What is plankton? Let's get a good scientific definition. Plankton are drifters, organisms that are simply carried along by the waters of the ocean. Let's see here. Plankton is, plankton are a diverse collection of organisms found in water or in the air, most commonly in water though. That do not propel themselves but just ride along. Um, They include bacteria, algae, protozoa, small animals. So, a lot of different things. And do whales eat them? Should we check that? Let's see here. Whale. Let's see here. They are the important crucial source of food for many small and large organisms such as fish and whales. There you go. Plankton. Now you know. I didn't know plankton could be in the air though. In my mind, plankton is always in the ocean but maybe I just don't know enough. But they're tiny so they fit in this lesson. Hey, that's the end of the formal part of the lesson. I am going to answer whatever questions remain and we will wrap this lesson up. Let me see what's left here. Four questions from, oh, I better put the question on the screen. Michalo. Sir, teacher Bob, what do you think are the smallest particles that make up the universe? Your thoughts. Have a great week. Well, I think electrons and neutrons and protons. Let's see. What is the smallest thing in the universe? Quarks. As far as we can tell, quarks can't be broken down into smaller components. So, quarks. I don't exactly know what quarks are but they are smaller. They're subatomic probably. Is that the word we would use? Possibly. Subatomic. Subatomic. Smaller than an atom. From Ashraf from Tunisia. I don't have any questions. It's just to thank you for these amazing lessons you're making on your channel. Well, thank you. I once had uh through Preply. There's a link below to Preply. If you ever want to find an English speaking partner, go to Preply. But I once through Preply found a French speaking partner who was from Tunisia, Tunisie, Tunisia. And that was fun. It was fun to speak French with them. Uh, Let's see here. From Alex. Hi, Bob. Do you have illustrated books in Canada and don't you think that reading such books is a good way to learn the language even if you are an adult? Yes, absolutely. There are books called um, DK Picture Books. Let me see. Yeah, there's books. I think they're from the Smithsonian. They're they're DK picture books. I if you do a search here, let me put this in the chat somewhere. DK picture books. So if you do a search for DK picture books, I put that in the chat. Um th- they just have all kinds of books on all different topics and they're filled with pictures and the words and some description. So, they were some of my favorite books as kids. We have a lot of those books at our school in our ESL room because it's just a great way. Like, if a student is in a science class, then they read the DK science book and then they can know what a beaker is and a flask and a Bunsen burner and all those terms. So, they are very, very good books. I highly recommend them. Hey, I think that's it. Let me check. Oh, wait. Let me go back to the questions. There's one more. Mr. Azaz. Hi, Bob. What's the difference when you say I'll be starting the English lesson soon 
and I'll start the English lessons soon. There's no difference. Um I think one is just a little wordier and it sounds nice. Hey, I'll be starting the English lesson soon. It's not as direct. It's a little more I know it sounds a little more welcoming. Like, hey everyone, I'll be starting the English lesson soon. But if I say, I'll start the English lesson soon, it sounds very direct. It's not impolite. It's still just communicating nicely. I'll start the English lesson soon. But I would say one is a little more fun. Hey, I'll be starting the English lesson soon. And the other one's very clear and direct. I'll start the English lesson soon. That's it everybody. We are done. You're one of the 321 people watching. Don't forget to click that red subscribe button. If you are looking for an English speaking partner, do click the link to Preply below and look for a English speaking partner. I'm sure you can find one. Um Preply's great. I used it for French. I might use it again but I have a nice friend in France right now. So, um that's a nice way to learn a language by the way. We speak French for half an hour and then English for half an hour. So, we each It's a language exchange. Very, very nice. Anyways, if you have time, this lesson will come out in a shorter version in a couple days. Do listen to it or watch it uh, to reinforce what you've learned. And uh, I do wanna thank all of the English teachers out there who use these videos in their classes. That's awesome. I got a nice message this week from someone who said, thank you so much. I use one of your lessons every other week in my night class. Um and they really liked the one uh that I did last week um which was a fairly technical lesson but they still really really enjoyed it. Um it was a good one for engineers and mechanics and it was a night class for farmers. So, they really enjoyed that lesson. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll say bye to a bunch of people now. Bye to Renata, Vitor, Lolly Lolly, uh Automation Secure Home which is uh Eugene from Etobicoke, Key Park, uh Az- Mr. Azaz, by Nightbot, John Wedge, uh Ulia, Dave. Thanks, Dave, for hanging out. Huawei, Zhang, uh Chen Yu. Bye to you as well. Key Park, Guillermo says, greetings from El Salvador. Nice to meet you. Um Sophia, let's see. Sophia says, hello, Mr. Bob. I've been following your channel for a long time. But this is the first time I've taken your online class. I'm from Hungary but currently living in the Netherlands. I don't speak Dutch very well but thank you very much for those kind words and it's awesome to have you here for a live lesson. Uh bye to Filippo. I'm gonna need my glasses here. It's the lower case that gets me. Bye to Brent from Speak English with this guy. Rwanda Prado, Sophia, Renata, Unsel, John Wedge, Freddie Wolf, um Garav, uh Binkin, Clive is here. Hi, Clive. Good to see you. Uh Irina is here as well. Good to see you. Chen Yu, I think I said bye to already. Osaka FT. Isa. Hi, Isa. Good to see you as well. Pakusan. Ideal. Sunny. I'm just gonna say bye to everybody now. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Have a good Friday. Um so oddly enough, if you're wondering what Bob the Canadian is doing today, I'm going to school. I'm going to work today even though I don't have to because our school bought two treadmills and someone has to put them together. So, I volunteered to go put them together. You don't know what a treadmill is. It's uh something that you you can set the speed and you walk on it for exercise. So, there I might have an ulterior motive. So, I volunteered to put them together. In English, an ulterior motive is when you do something to help someone else but it also helps you a little bit. So, I feel like if I go and take the treadmills out of their boxes, there's two of them and if I put them together then on a rainy day or a hot day, I can go to school and walk on the treadmill instead of walking along the road. Anyways, that's my plan for today. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day. Um see you next week. I'm not doing a lesson on gigantic things next week but uh, I will probably do a lesson on gigantic things maybe in two weeks. Bye.